So empowerment. Apparently, that's what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about empowerment. And I love talking about empowerment because I made a big old career out of it. Everyone seems to be talking about empowerment right now. And it seems that we've collectively decided what empowerment means. But I propose that empowerment means something different based on who is talking about it. The reason I say this is because companies, corporations are now talking about empowerment. So they'll come on your TV or on your Instagram feed, be like, empower yourself with this expensive eye cream <laughs> that will stop you aging. Because clearly, as a woman, you're scared of aging because you're scared of dying. They don't put the last bit. But <laughs> you get my point. It's this fear. We're, we're sold things that we don't need based on the fear of dying, of aging. And I don't see how that's empowering to weaponize something that is inevitable. So I started really looking at this idea of empowerment or the terminology, as it were, of empowerment. Because to me, it just seems like then what we're dealing with is a plaster, almost, that's meant to cover this vast wound that's just, it's just too big to be covered by just one simple word, you know? But hey, eye cream, you know? It's, 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 it's weird to me. So when I was asked to do this talk, that's one thing I considered. I don't want to talk to you about how I empower other women, because I don't, now I don't believe that I do. I don't believe that anyone actually does. That might sound controversial based on everything that everyone said tonight, but I don't, I don't, I don't believe it anymore, right? So I'm not just a random weirdo talking at you. Uh, my name is Kelechi Okafor. I'm an actor, I'm a director, I'm a dance innovator, and I'm a social commentator. But, um, <laughs> so... I came about all of these terms on my journey to find my power because I believed that I'd lost my power. Why did I believe that? Well, when I was much younger, very, very young, a very, very young girl, I was sexually abused for a long time. And what happened there was that I believed that I couldn't have any power. Otherwise, how does that happen to somebody? So I became withdrawn, retreated into myself, I was still good at my school subjects because Nigerian. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I was great at my school subjects, but when it came to friendships and things of that nature, I just retreated into a space within myself that felt safer than the world outside of myself. And it was upsetting, you know, because now that I play it back, school teachers would write in my reports, oh, Kalechi is so bright, she's so talented, she's so moody. Why did no one question the moodiness? Like, what, what makes a child that young moody constantly? Year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. What, what makes a child moody? So I, even as a child, then knew that I had power to share, or I wanted to find power to share, but I had to find it first, right? And I had light to give, but I just had to be the light first. But... I didn't have it. I didn't know where to find it because I believed that I was lost. I believed that I was lost because I believed that my power was lost. Over the years, though, the feeling didn't leave me. The feeling that I could be powerful and the world could be brighter didn't leave me. So I started teaching myself things. I mean, I already read a lot anyway, but I started reading a lot more. So I read a lot. I ran a lot because I've always been into athletics, 200-meter sprint. Um, so I read a lot, I, cry, um, I ran a lot, and then I cried a lot. And you wondered, you know, why are you crying? Why are you crying? That's the question you get a lot from parents. Why are you crying? Um, but I cried because I had to grieve the childhood I never got to have, right? I cried because I had to grieve the woman I wouldn't ever be because I didn't have that childhood. And then I just cried because it's cathartic, you know, to release in that way. But catharsis isn't the end of healing. In fact, it's the beginning, you know? So all of these things were happening in my mind. I, I knew, I started putting all of these things together, and then I thought, you know what, I need a professional. So I sought therapy. And then in therapy, 
I started to learn about shame. Why are we talking about shame? Because I came here to talk about power. I don't have any power. Tell me how I get that. She's like, no, no, no. Because power and shame, they're linked. And the thing is, shame has taught you that your power is non-existent. Shame has presented itself to you as that friend, the friend that loves you so much and wants to keep you away from further harm, so it asks you to withdraw from everything. But actually, that withdrawal is part of the harm. So through therapy, I was able to sit down and really interrogate my shame and unlearn, I guess, all of the untruths that I'd been taught about what power is, who has it, who deserves it, and how it can be lost. Now, the one thing I learned about shame, I've shared. Then I had to learn something about power and empowerment. And what I discovered about empowerment is that it's not a destination. You know, people talk about being empowered. It's not a destination, it's a journey. So if empowerment is a journey, how does that work? Well, I don't believe that, you know, you, you, you start on this yellow brick road having no power, and then you navigate this yellow brick road to meet an empowerment wizard who then grants you your power. Because just like that very story, no one can give you anything that already exists within you. They can't, nobody outside of yourself can give you something that you were inherently born with, right? So, empowerment is a journey. It's not a destination. Where is the destination? Where are we going? Because that's, what you wanna, that's what you wanna ask really, where are we going? Whether you're doing ride or die or anything, ask where are we going? So, where are we going? I believe that we're going back to the source. I believe that the destination is a, a shedding, as it were, of the physical body to energetically reconnect back to source. So the source of our creation, the source of our power. Everything that we do in between is merely training. We can train ourselves to use the power that we have to either make ourselves bigger and make others bigger or to make ourselves smaller and to make others smaller. That's the choice. That's the journey. You decide. So this is why I have a real issue with people thinking that empowerment looks a particular way. My empowerment, I wear hot pants. I twerk. I pole dance. I have a pole dance studio. That's what I mean by dance innovator. Like, I drop it down low. Um, so... Um, that's part of my empowerment, but I believe that what I spiritually signed up for before entering into a physical form was that through the trauma, somehow, I would find a way to embrace my body again, while simultaneously eschewing the narratives perpetuated by society of what it means to be in a black woman's body, because we are hypersexualized. So these are the things that I'm going through, that I'm working through. But then on the flip side, one of my friends, she wears a hijab. That doesn't make her any less empowered than I am. That doesn't make her journey less worthy than mine. We're just on different journeys, but what? We're going back to the same source. And that's why it's important to respect my journey because I will respect yours. And as far as I'm concerned, if you're a woman in this society, most especially, there's just a line of people willing to give you shame in exchange for your power. And it's up to you to say, no, I'm good, I'm all right, I'm just going to keep what I've got right here, I'm fine, thank you so much. So, empowerment is a journey. The destination is going back to source. So then what is power? And again, I propose to you that actually, power is your backpack. Because you're going on a journey, and if you have sense, if you're going on a journey, you'll take, you'll take things with you to help you, you know, help you along your way. So you'd have a backpack. You'd have a backpack that has all of the things that you need to help you along your way. And what comes to my mind is, around 2016, I went to South Africa to do this uh, program called Special Forces, Ultimate Hell Week. It was hell. And um, during the program, you know, we're in South Africa, 
and they have to beast you. They have to put you through the worst things, and they are waiting for you to be like, oh, my God, I just want to go home. I just, I just don't want to do this anymore. I did that. After a few days, I'm like, I'm going home to my house. But on the first day that I was there, they gave us our Bergens. So Bergens are like your big, you know, your big backpacks. They gave us our Bergens, and it was heavy. And then they took us up this hill, they took us up the hill, made us run up the hill. When we got to the top of the hill, the sun was setting, and they said to us, you're sleeping here tonight, good luck with that. And that's just out in an open field, nothing, just out in an open field. They left us and went, and they just set cameras to see us suffering, and then went. So at first, I'm like, wow, I'm in South Africa. Wow, look at the stars. That lasted all of 35 minutes, because suddenly I was like, I'm really cold. I'm very cold. And actually, that coldness turned into hypothermia. I became hypothermic by the end of that night. I was shit. I've ne- the oh, the cold, <laughs> the cold entered my soul. I was shivering from places I never knew someone could shiver from. I was so cold. And meanwhile, I'm resting my head on my berg, and I'm like, oh, God. okay. I, it was horrible. Then they arrived in the morning, and they're like, "How did you do, recruit?" I froze. I froze. In fact, the medic is here to tell you that I'm now hypothermic. Well, why are you hypothermic? Because you had everything that you needed in your Bergen. <laughs> well, I'm, wait right there. I'm going to have a look. And I opened the Bergen, and lo and behold, I had so much in there. That's why it was so heavy. Like, literally, literally everything was in there. They gave us a makeshift tent. I had a jumper. I had socks. I, had, I, I wanted to weep at my own silliness. Like, why, why didn't I just open the bag? None of us did. So I wasn't the only one. I wasn't the only person. None of us opened the bag to check what was in it. So we all just froze as a community <laughs> in the field for no reason. And the reason that I tell you that It's because I feel like this is similar to what we have in our lives. We have a Bergen. We have a backpack of power. Yet we're looking at other people saying, please, I need some. I need, empower me. Empower me. Show me how to be empowered. Meanwhile, you have it. It's yours. You had it the whole time. So that's what brought me to, you know, this realization that we should consider that empowerment is a journey, our destination is back to source, and our power is our backpack, and within it we have everything we need to navigate this sometimes treacherous society. We have all that we need. So the point of this for me really is to invite you to consider that empowerment is also your journey, and it's not a destination. And that power is also your backpack. And while you are working your way through this rough life, because life can be rough sometimes, know that you have everything that you need within you and with you as you make that journey back to source, as you make that journey back to everything that was, everything that is, and everything that will ever be. I'm Kalechi Okafor. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk.